Hello, everybody, and welcome in for another episode of Vault Club Confidential, sponsored by our great friends at Knoxville Smiles. I'm your host, Austin Price of VaultQuest.com. Coming up tonight on the show, we have Tennessee tight end Miles Kitzelman. But before we get to him, we bring in Will Watkins of the Volunteer Club. And, Will, a lot of exciting times. we got the big tailgate at Oklahoma coming yep. up this weekend Absolutely. after Tennessee moving to 3-0 and last weekend against Kent State. Love it. Yep, we'll be a big presence outside of Oklahoma, so I want to encourage everybody to come out and see us. Make sure you go into the app, reserve your tickets. Uh, we'll be right there outside the stadium uh, on the corner of Jenkins and Asp, I think is the street, but right outside the stadium. Can't miss us. Lots of white tents, but again, get your ticket in the app, reserve your space, and we'll get you guys more information this week. Oklahoma's an exciting game because Tennessee fans have had the chance to go there once, but yep. most of the fan base will have not have been there, so it's an awesome. opportunity for those that haven't been to go to one of the new schools. We'll have to wait at least a couple more years for Texas with them just flipping the schedule next year. Um, a lot of new things and exciting things in the app, uh, including awesome. a new show that you're piloting. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to make sure everybody's going into the app, checking out all the content we have. Uh, I'm biased towards my new show with Thomas Warden, so it's called The More Steam Show. So we're breaking down the opponent in depth each week, kind of going through the the depth and the scheme, kind of talking X's and O's a little bit. Thomas is a great mind on the football side, so we look at each team, break down the opportunity that we have that week, and kind of go through the game. So I want to make sure everybody's checking that out, but that's not the only content on there. Like right now, last week, Kate Runyon. Lady Vol soccer player had a behind the scenes travel episode, so we've got tons of new content coming out. So make sure again, check out the app. Make sure you're checking out all the content we have. And of course, all the things that we put at VolQuest, uh, Eric came with Locked On, yeah, absolutely. Josh Pate, all those things are on there. So it's a one stop shop. That is the goal. We want it to be an aggregate. If, if you're looking for Tennessee content, the app is the place to be. So the Volunteer Club app has you know everything you could possibly want from college football, college basketball, anything Tennessee related. You can find it in the app. You can find it all on the Volunteer Club app, including his new show. More steam. More steam. Make sure you go and check it out. Now, for more on the great people at Knoxville Smiles, let's take a listen to Lance Hurd. Knoxville Smiles, depending on us to make your smile better. Knoxville Smiles, are you happy with your smile today? Knoxville Smiles, we're all about smiles. Hey, Lance, what makes you smile? Uh, pancake blocks. <laughs> Miles, when you, when you got here, kind of what were the expectations, like in, internally in your mind? You know, what, what were you hoping to accomplish when you got to Tennessee? Um, just getting on the field was the first thing in my mind. Um, you know, coming from Alabama and not really getting to play a whole lot, my whole objective in the, um, in the portal was just get somewhere that I can get on the field, and after that I can show people what I can do. Um, so my expectations coming in were just to prove the coaches that um, – you know, I'm more than just a big guy that can block. I can do stuff out in space. I'm smart. I can pick up on things and stuff like that. So my expectations were just to come in and really just impress coaches and get the respect of my teammates right off the bat. What do you think the just from the outside looking in? What do you think the the notion was when when Tennessee you know got your commitment there and you know after the first of the year? Um, I mean, it's kind of been like this my whole life. I've been kind of not necessarily doubted, but kind of doubted. You know, I was a zero star coming out of high school. Um, didn't have really any offers. And so I feel like coming in here, it was kind of the same deal. And this is not against anybody, but kind of just, uh, he's, you know, six, five and a half, six, six, two fifty five. Like he's just going to be a bigger guy, kind of some depth for us. Um, you know, be a third and short guy, you know, that kind of stuff. So I feel like that's kind of what the expectations were. Like, I didn't really play a whole lot of Alabama, so when you don't have film, it's hard to have high hopes. Um, kind of just taking a shot on a kid. And so I feel like the what people expected were just come in for some depth, good, be good at blocking, that kind of stuff. Coming out of high school, you you played defensive end, mm-hmm. and you could have went Division two, but you chose to go the junior college route just to see if you could – develop into something which mm-hmm. worked out for you right i mean you, you signed with alabama so i mean like right. you go from as you said no stars with nothing to you know one of the premier college programs and now to hear two of the two of the premier college programs mm-hmm. and all of college football yeah i mean it's just um you know growing up in a small town where nobody goes d1 i mean all my friends didn't even go to college um and there's nothing wrong with that but 
the expectations are just set low, I guess, where I'm coming from. And so, um, you know, growing up, was always just like, yeah, you'll probably just go to your local D2 and have a good season have or have a good career, um, you know, play your four or five years, whatever it is, and, and be done with it. And so growing up, just always, you know, people were asking me, what are you going to do for college? And I'd be like, oh, I'm just going to go to my local D2 here and, you know, just have fun. And um, luckily, shout out to my dad and my uncle. They're like, Miles, like, we can't let you do this, um, first of all. You know, DNs are hybrid, at like freak athletes. They told me I'm not a freak athlete, and I knew that. And um, and they're like, second of all, you have way too much hand-eye coordination and smarts to not go play tight end and see what you can do with it. And at first, I kind of fought it because, um, I mean, it was scary. Like, I've never been away from home, and then all of a sudden, I know this is going to sound funny, but you know, Hutch is about three and a half hours away from home, and um, you know, you don't know if you're going to walk in there and um, you know, Hutch is a premier Juco college to where it's like, man, I could go in there and not even see the field. Um, but, you know, my dad and my uncle and my family talked me into it and said that you need to go bet on yourself. And I did. And I walked into Hutch, had some great coaches there that believed in me and the rest is history. But one of those coaches was Coach Cook, mm-hmm. who ends up being here. And he stood on the table uh, for you when Tennessee was kind of maybe looking for a tight end maybe not right. you know after they had added holden um said you know told coach ablin you know hey this guy has twitch this guy can run routes mm-hmm. um like what did that relationship mean for you just to kind of get your foot in the door here yeah me and coach cook have a huge love hate relationship um i would say tough love's probably a better word for that um i got to hutch and coach cook was the wide receivers coach and I remember one day I ran a route and I remember him just cussing me out saying that that's the worst route he's ever seen. Um, like, don't ever put that stuff on tape again. And I had never really talked to him before. And I just looked at him and I was like, well, then coach me then. And, um, you know, for the next six months, every morning at 630, we were doing footwork uh, with the wide receivers. And that really took my game to the next level. And honestly, that's what got me to Alabama. And that's what got me noticed. Um And so Coach Cook got a really good opportunity to see who I was, you know, a small town, tough kid, blue collar, all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, he developed me into somebody that can that can do both. And so for him to be here um, and for Abe to trust him when he says, like, no, this kid's going to come in. He's a hard worker. And not only is he big and physical and tough, but he's going to be able to do some stuff for you out in space. I remember during spring practice, there started to be that little chatter out there, like, you know, this kid's good. This kid's going to play. This kid, you know, is catching everything, comes, and he's an athlete and all this. And like, was there a moment in spring practice where you were like, yeah, there we go. I've got a little momentum here. Like, I mean, what was, it? was there a catch? Was there a practice where you walked off the field and said, I think they got their eyes opened a little bit today. For sure. Um, you know, coming confidence is everything, um, and every ball player knows that. And so to come here and, you know, not really see in the field for the past two years, my confidence was not where it needed to be. And for the coaches to just believe in me and see what I can do and just instill that confidence in me every single day. And um, there was one practice that – stood out a little bit in spring for me Um, my dad was actually there was able to make it and um, I ended up you know having three or four touchdowns that day and I had a jump ball a fade ball and I had to go over a DB and go grab it and um, that was that was my first fade ball that I had ran in forever and I made a tough contested and Nico threw a perfect ball and um, that was really whenever I was like man dude like I I can really do this because I had never really done that kind of stuff out in space. And, um, you know, that was really whenever I was like, okay, like I can do this. And P. Fant was there, and he ended up saying something to Coach Habes, like, hey, man, that 87 can move. And I was like, okay, well, if somebody in the NFL is saying that I can move, then, you know, like let's do this. Like, you know, the confidence just continues to, to build. Um, and we got a long ways to go. But, yeah, that practice in spring was – was really good for me mentally you've, you've had a couple home games now you've got the nc state you know neutral side game when you've caught that touchdown kind of take me what's going through your mind like 
who are you looking for? Are you looking, are you looking for anybody in the stands? Did you know where your parents were? I mean, like, like all that stuff. Like, what? Well, take me through that play. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously it's it's set up for you know to to, to do about the secondary, and they were duped. You were wide open. Yeah. So to start off with, um, pointing up to the stands. Um, unfortunately, my grandma passed away about three or four weeks ago. Um, my dad's mom, and so you know we're talking. You know, before that, we were all talking about, well, what's your touchdown celebration going to be? And I always wanted to be the Gronk spike, but it can't be that. And so I was like, you know what? Like, I'm just going to, I'm going to point at you, Dad. And like, we're all going to know what that means. And it was, it's funny. Um, but, you know, throughout the game, I try to look for my family when I can. You know, when I'm off on the sidelines, I'm like kind of peeking up there to see where they're at. And I couldn't, I couldn't find them. Um, and when I scored that touchdown, the second I turned around to look for them, I see my dad and my uncle and my girlfriend up there, and he immediately found them. And I was like, pointed at them, and um, so that that me- meant a lot to me. Um, but as far as the play, yeah, I mean, uh, Coach Hosley did a great job of setting that play up. Um, you know, all night was just hitting the corner, blocking the corner, blocking the corner, blocking out, blocking out, and then all of a sudden, block out. Safety loses his eyes on me. Who has me, man? And you know get up into the flat um and so um but yeah i mean that that was awesome that experience was it happened so fast i didn't think it was going to happen that fast going through my mind you know thinking about it before but it all happened so fast and i'm just so grateful that um you know i could find my family up in the stands and give them that little recognition but yeah we love grandmas on this show yes we do everybody knows grandmas are the best yes we do grandmas too um I thought the the play that got called back that was even a, a greater illustration of your athleticism. I mean, backpedaling. I mean, I think most of us would have been flat on our butt backpedaling as quickly as you were on that play on that scramble drill. And uh, still not sure that call was the correct call, but no, it, it was so it was what it was, yeah. right? Uh, you know, how much do you kind of like you talk about having that kind of feel for Nico? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when did you kind of know that he kind of had a you know? a good vibe with you and vice versa as far as on that play no no just in general like i mean like that one's gotcha. one, like where like you just you're like, right. all right boom and like he's looking for you right mm-hmm. like it, you can kind of tell you all kind of jive yeah um i mean i think that just takes repetition for somebody to believe in you um and that goes for any position but especially with quarterback man like you got to make some tight throws and some tight windows and um you know, it can get really complex on, on different looks, different coverages, and all that kind of stuff. So I think just through the spring and through fall camp, you know, me and Nico talking after plays like, hey, if it's this look, you need to do this. If it's this look, you need to do this. And he came up to me before the game. He was like, hey, if we get this look, I need you to do this. And I was like, okay, got it. So stuff like that to where, um, you know, Nico's a super smart kid, very smart. And, um, you know, just to, over the last nine months – going over every single look you could possibly think of and me and him working things out where you build that confidence plays like that that broke I mean that's just ball players being ball players and I didn't think Nico was going to be able to get that ball to me but I forgot how good he was (laughs) man someone in your face throwing at 50 yards pretty crazy but through a couple games you've each got a touchdown right Mm -hmm. first two games like that that's a you know that's pretty neat that all the everybody in the tight end room that's that's playing mm-hmm. um, has a touchdown. How close is that unit? Because everybody talks about it. Coach Heibel's talked about it, just that unit being just super tight when, like, you know, there's a competitiveness to everybody. But right. it seems like, you know, you guys are able to put it away once practice ends. Yeah, I think um, I think we all kind of realize, like, there's a place for everybody in this, in this offense, and it's not just going to be, um, you know, one guy running the show. You know, when you get 70, 80 snaps in a game, like those snaps need to be shared. And so to be able to realize that, everybody grow up and be men about it and go, okay, like at that point, I'm not I'm not preying on anybody's downfall. I'm trying to get you as best as you can because when I come out of the game, I need you to be on your stuff. And so, you know, when you go through that every single day and you have, you know, Holden and Ethan calling me out and me calling them out when they're not doing the standard and when I'm not doing the standard and that kind of stuff, um, that relationship, like that's when you truly get that bond. And, you know, for over the last nine months, uh, that bond just continues to get better and better and our connection continues to get better and better. And, man, this is this is the best group, tight end group I've been a part of. And these guys 
man, they're a lot more than just my teammates. They're brothers for sure. What do you like about Coach Abel? Um, I really like how Coach Abe's um, – he feels like one of the guys – when it's okay to feel like one of the guys, if that makes sense. Um, you know, there's there's always, you know, my dad always said there's a time and place for fun and there's a time and place for work. And I think Coach Hapes does a great job of, um, you know, when you're sitting in meetings for two hours, you know, it's nice to have a position coach that can laugh a little bit, joke a little bit, but when it's time to get down to business, um, he gets down to it. And uh, when he, it's time to get on us about something, he gets on us about it. And I, I can really respect that about somebody um, not always being work, work, work. Like, man, sometimes you need to let up a little bit, especially when you spend 14 hours a day in a facility. Um, so I'd say that's my biggest thing I love about Coach Abe's. What makes you smile? Um, football, golf, my girlfriend, my family. All right, for more on smiling and Knoxville smiles, here's a look at them. I'm Tennessee basketball player J.P. Estrella. Let me give you a tour here of the offices at Knoxville Smiles. Dr. Costa is placing implants with a robot and it's all done digitally. There's no guessing with this since it's all robotic. Dr. Wilco is the newest addition to the office. He loves to research the latest and greatest in technology. So the other doctors go to him for the newest product information and techniques. Dr. Malone is building teeth in the mouth. To him, cosmetic bonding is more like artwork. He does this without cutting your teeth down. It's all about building them up. Guys, we still have a problem. Do y'all have a bigger chair? Continue to get your questions in on the Volunteer Club app. As for this week's question to Miles Kitzelman, we've got a three-parter from three special youngsters. Here we go. What's the hardest hit that you that somebody hit you? Hardest hit that somebody hit me, I would have to say, is probably Arion Carter fitting up split flow um man that kid can bring it who's your hero i'd have to say my hero is my dad for sure um has definitely made me into the man that i am today and and is continues to be there and guide me in the right way and just treats me great life skills and um yeah he's my hero what's the best advice you've ever got be who you say you're going to be if you say that you're going to be somebody um then do it. If you say that you're going to work hard, work hard. If you say that you're going to wake up early, wake up early. If you say that you're going to give it your all, give it your all. So that's what I got. Continue to get your questions in on the Volunteer Club app. Maybe, just maybe, your question will be answered by one of the players or coaches that are right here on Vol Club Confidential, sponsored by Knoxville Smiles, each and every week. Before the break for Knoxville Smiles, you referenced golf as something that makes you smile. Um, you and Coach Ablin have that in, very much in common, mm -hmm. as he loves golf. Um, he's bragged on. He says you can play quite a bit. Kind of, you know, can really can really put it out there you know, off the tee. Kind of, you know, where did the love for golf come from? And how long have you been playing? Uh, for sure, my dad played golf um, in college and played golf in high school. And um, you know, as us youngsters were growing up, he didn't get to play as much. But um, he tried to get me to play in high school, and obviously, golf was just too boring for me in high school. <laughs> and um, all of a sudden, I get down to. Uh, Alabama and um, man I you know in the summers you got a little bit of free time and I'm like all oh, my buddies are going golfing I'm like I, I need I need to go golfing so my dad you know without a doubt goes and buys me a sets of clubs and you know he comes down to Tuscaloosa and street you know we go out to the to the range and he's giving me tips and all that kind of stuff and so I've been playing um, here for about two years now and um, you know I got got my dad as a coach and it's been a lot of fun. Coach Ablin, you know, can put it out there pretty good for somebody that has to put down the clubs for long, long stretches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I know whenever I go out, um, you know, during the season, we don't we don't really get um, any time to go out and play. And when I come back in the spring and try to go out there, it, it's rough. So for somebody that doesn't really get to play, um, you know, me and him actually got to go and play together. And, and he was striping, and it was like the first time he'd play in like two or three months. And uh, me and him actually scrambled together and beat my dad and my uncle. So that was – that was nice. Yeah. You got bragging rights. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's probably the only bragging rights I'll have with my dad in golf is when I scramble against him. You never know. You just continue to keep playing. Yeah, well, now he's starting to get retired, so that's all he does is golf. So he's just he keeps getting better and better, and I keep getting worse and worse. Do you wish you had taken advantage of Prairie Dunes out there in Hutchison, Kansas? Yeah. So my, my actually my tight ends coach at Hutch – uh, was a huge golfer and tried to get me out there, but at that time I wasn't playing. And I was like, man, I'm not going golfing. Looking back, I missed out. 
and stuff. Yes, yes, you did. But guess what? You can always go back as an alum yeah. and, and try to cash in. Well, with somebody I don't, I don't know how Prairie Dunes is going to compare up to the golf courses out here. Man, up here in the Smoky Mountains, these golf courses are crazy. They're amazing. Prairie Dunes is pretty pretty special. I'll have to go see it. I'll <laughs> it's have to pretty, go see it's it. pretty special. Um, what's something most people don't know about you? What's something most people don't know about me? Well, I was going to say I'm, I'm a good golfer. Um, what's something that most people don't know about me? Yeah, I'm going to have to think about this one. All right, you got the girlfriend. Got the girlfriend. I've had her for... Where's she from? Uh, she's from Wichita, which is about Wichita, Kansas, yeah. which is about 30 minutes south of uh, Hutchison. So we met. Um, she was running track and playing volleyball, dual sport. And so we'd be out there um, practicing, and she'd be running around the track. And I started asking some of the guys, like, who's that? Who's that? And we ended up meeting, and the rest is history. What was the first day, too? First date? Oh, this is embarrassing. Well, in Hutchinson, Kansas, you yeah, don't really have too many options. Um, but that was Sonic. And, um, yeah, we got – what did I get? I got a cookie dough blast, and she got, like, a sugar-free raspberry water and made me feel terrible. But Was this during the half-off time, like half-off limeades? Yeah, yeah, it was. But You even went cheaper than that, huh? Yeah, yeah, I did. But I did pay. I did pay for her 99-cent raspberry water. So You overcame. I did. I, I really went overboard on that one. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if she was ever going to talk to me again. After what, what's that. your what's your what, what's been your go to date out here? Has she been out here? I assume we go to Chivo, down there on Gay Street. Yeah, yeah, get some good uh, chips and queso and some guac. Yeah, that's been it. Your go to meal. My go to meal is definitely going to be a filet mignon, loaded baked potato, medium rare for sure. Is that what you had at the Roots Chris the night you committed to the staff? Yeah. Yeah, that's actually what made me commit. <laughs> yeah. Those 300-degree plates or whatever they are. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I burned myself on that for sure. <laughs> he even told me, but I was too hungry. <laughs> Some place you've never been to that you'd like to go to? Mm. Bali. Yeah, my um, one of my teammates from Alabama just took his honeymoon to Bali and – yeah, it looked pretty crazy. I really want to go there. Do you feel old now that you've got teammates that are getting married? I mean, I mean, of course, Keenan's been married, so he, right. he, he's a different. He's a new teammate for you, and when you're talking about one of your older teammates. But I mean, you know, now here you are. Is there pressure? I mean, so we, it, in my defense, my old teammate was a Marine for six years. Okay, so no. similar to Keenan, where yeah. he took some time off, he took six years off, served our country, and then came back. So he's. I think he just turned 27 and his wife is 29, so kind of. But, yeah, I mean, there's definitely um, one of my best friends from back home. He actually plays D1 ball uh, out in Utah Tech. Him and his girl have been together for a year and a half, two years, and they just got engaged. So that's the one that really puts some pressure on me. She's like, well, we've been dating for almost three years. And I'm like, all right. Yeah, really Dane, my buddy that just got engaged. I was kind of mad at him. Is the family coming out for every game? Um, my dad and uncle make it to every game. My mom, um, I got a little 10-year-old brother who actually just started his first um, tackle youth football game. So she's um, you know, got a little one back home to still go to games and all that kind of stuff. Who's the one person, if I ask you to pull your phone out right now, and you can't use the girlfriend, Okay. who's the one person you know will answer if you call? Mm. You can always depend on Dan Whalen. All right, call him. Call him. Put him on speaker. All right. We do this every week on the show. Last year it was Jordan LeBron. This year's a little more interactive. Oh man, he's out in Utah right now, so it's what six thirteen. So let's see if he. Answers. He might be at practice. Could he be at practice? He might. They do early practice, so he might oh. be at meetings still. Hello, gorgeous. What are you doing, buddy? I'm um, sitting here on a podcast, and uh, they asked me who's the one person I could count on to answer the phone, and I said, "Old Dan Whalen." Hey. And you answered. Okay. You did not. You did not disappoint with the old "Hey, gorgeous." I can always count on you. Hey, I gotta, I gotta pick you up every now and then. You know? I know. You do look in the mirror every day. I know. <laughs> How was practice today? What podcast are you on? Yeah, uh, what podcast am I on? Uh, it's for. Um, 
It's called Ball Club Confidential. Ball Club Confidential. So we're just answering some questions, getting to know me a little bit, and had to call the old best friend. I told him that uh, you just got engaged and you put the pressure on me. So thanks for that. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. I hope Haley's annoying you for it. Yeah, she is. <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Thanks for answering. All right. You, you got it. See you again. All right. See you, bud. Oh, the legendary Dan Whalen. Yep. Um, I assume will you be best man in his wedding, or or at least a groomsman? I'm assuming. Oh yeah, yeah, groomsman. I don't know about best man. He's got another kid that he grew up with, but for sure groomsman, and he'll be right up there with me. Do, do you have that kind of pegged out in your mind? Who's going to be a groomsman in this in this in this wedding that will eventually come? Yeah, well, that's tough because um, you know being at three different colleges, and then obviously I, I was in high school. High school for my entire life so you got you know i actually had three buddies come down to the game chattanooga that are my ride or dies so they got to be in the wedding and then you got you know two or three guys from bama and you know hopefully here in the next couple months continue to grow relationships and have a couple guys from here and a couple guys from hutch i don't know if Haley has enough <laughs> i don't know if she has enough bridesmaids to keep up so it's I'm normally the to, opposite right i know but um Nah, yeah, I, Dylan Meyer, best man, grew up together with him, known him since I was two years old, so he's a lock, and you got a brother, and you got people like Dane, so it's going to be tough, but everybody's coming on the on the trip, on the bachelor trip. The bachelor trip. Yeah, everybody's coming. You got Abel, and he's getting married after the first of the year. He is, and the tight ends aren't invited. Isn't that some crazy stuff? You know why? Yeah, I know. Alcohol. Yeah, I know. Even though yeah. you're old enough. Yep. It's against the rules. But I was still disappointed. I know. He didn't invite you on, your, on his bachelor trip either. Yeah, that probably wouldn't be good either. Probably more alcohol there. <laughs> <laughs> he shot 144 at the ocean course. Yeah, that's what he was saying. <laughs> oh, that was so funny because he golfed with me like right before that and went out and shot like an 82 and then – it's a different level, yeah, which is. is what Prairie Dunes is, a different yeah. level. Yeah, and out, out there in Hutch, you're going to have 30-mile-an-hour winds. winds. You yeah. can bet on it. But Kansas, you've been Chiefs guy. Yeah, yeah, I'm a Chiefs guy. I was I was a Packers guy there for a while because of Jordy Nelson. Yeah. His hometown is about 45 minutes away from where I grew up, and uh, I loved Aaron Rodgers, and Jordy Nelson was just fun to watch. But, yeah, I'm I'm a big Chiefs guy. 87 87 all the way did you was that was that what number you wanted when you got here or was that just kind of what the game yeah that's what i wanted i wanted that at alabama but is it because of jordy nelson no that's for gronk okay yeah gronk's i follow now yeah yeah gronk spike number not quite as big or talented as him but gotta have the number mount rushmore tight ends who you got this might upset some people but it is what it is. Um, Gronk, number one. And I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Jason Witten, number two. And then George Kittle, number three. That's really gonna upset some people. And then Travis Kelsey, number four. The reason behind George being above Travis, and Travis is a phenomenal player. Obviously we all know that. But if you go and like like what is a tight end? A tight end is somebody who can go cut out a C-gap, block man on duo, and then go in big body and be a mismatch outside. Well, if you look at Travis Kelsey's film, I pull up a pick or a clip where he's driving Aiden Hutchinson into the ground or putting Joey Bosa on it, Joey Bosa on his back, like or Nick Bosa. Like you're just Travis isn't doing that. And so if you're going to call Travis at tight end, the greatest tight end of all time, like you got to show me some of that because that's part of being a tight end. If not, put him in the Hall of Fame as a wide receiver. Um, and that's not to put any dirt on Travis's career because obviously it's been phenomenal. But you look at George Kittle's film, and it's like, man, that's a tight end. That is somebody who is unselfish, who, I mean, you watch receiver, he's like, I don't care. I love blocking. I love blocking more than I do going and catching touchdowns. And, like, that's what a tight end is all about because when you're really good at blocking, the touchdowns just fall on top of that. So that's kind of my reason behind it. And I know a lot of people still won't agree with me, but 
that's just my opinion. No, I think you picked four good ones. I mean, I don't think you could. I mean, there's there, there's always one you could go Tony Gonzalez. You go Ozzy Newsom, who Newsome. created the tight end position. Kellen Winslow. Yeah. Antonio Gates is up there. Antonio Gates. Yeah, Mark Andrews one. is up there. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of studs, but those guys are just different. I feel you. What uh, What's one thing you do since you got to Knoxville that maybe you didn't do elsewhere? For sure. Um, I will say, at Alabama, I, um, I definitely lost a lot of hope. Um, you know, whenever I got the offer – I was like, man, I'm going to step in there and I'm going to be on the field and, um, man, I'm going to be playing for Alabama. I'm going to be playing for Nick Saban. And then I get there and um, it didn't quite turn out like that. I wasn't quite ready physically. And, um, you know, it just wasn't the turnout that I was expecting. So I lost a lot of hope. So like I mentioned earlier with Coach Cook where, you know, I'm up every morning, I'm doing my footwork, I'm keying in on film and all that extra stuff that really took my game to the next level. I got to Bama and I stopped doing those things. I really did because I lost hope. Uh, I was like, man, if there's no hope, why would I get up an extra hour early to go do footwork? Or why would I stay an extra hour late to watch film when I'm not even going to be on the field? Which is the complete wrong way I took that. But I would say just coming back here into Knoxville and these coaches believing in me and um, me believing in myself and just having hope again, it's like, man, uh, like I, I got another chance. I got a second. Like God gave me a second chance, and there's no way I'm gonna let this slip through like I did over there at that other school. So, I mean, just extra footwork during the summers for sure. After practice, trying to key in on the jugs, just getting my hands right, extra film, all that extra stuff. I'm sure you're looking forward to the Alabama game. We won't give them any bulletin board material, but I do wonder. I, I have to go back and look. I do wonder if, if Tennessee were to win this year, if you would be the first player to ever be able to smoke the cigar on both sides of the rivalry. I don't know. I've never thought about that. To wrap up, kind of, you know, what do you want to accomplish the rest of this year? I mean, I know the team stuff. That's, to me, common sense. But individually, what, you know, do you have things written down where you're like, you know, little goals that you're trying to check off? And You know, I was never big on, like, writing down stats as goals. Um, you know, I had, I had goals set up. That was whenever I first got here, you know, before I knew that all three of us tight ends were going to play, but it was like, you know, goals as far as, you know, no, you're going to outwork, you're going to outwork those other guys and you're going to um, do this. And every single morning you're going to wake up and you're going to do this. Um, and every single day you're going to stay late and do this. And three times a week is route stuff at work and, three times a week is working on the run game and then two times a week is film and so I never really wrote down like hey I want you know seven touchdowns and 500 yards this year um, because I feel like if you kind of see yourself not necessarily getting those stats that can kind of put you in the wrong headspace so um, you know my goals were a little different as far as you know like I mentioned earlier what's the best advice I've ever gotten is be who you say you're going to be do what you say you're going to do and, um, you know, writing down those goals and say, no, every single day that alarm's going off at 530 and you're not hitting snooze. Like you're getting up and you need to go and get your body right, do extra footwork. And then after practice, you need to stay and work on this. You need to work on this, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is this, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday is this. You know, that was obviously during the summer. But, um, you know, those were my goals coming in is to just be consistent is what I'm doing um, and not fall back into those habits of, hitting the snooze button no snooze button here no as, snooze button uh, you know tennessee matriculates to norman oklahoma this coming weekend for a big game against the sooners of oklahoma he'll have a lot of family in attendance not too far from his hometown over in kansas we'll see you in norman sounds good thanks for having me appreciate you coming in man thanks thanks for having me